<laughs> like this cake is actually calling me, right? Well, we, we, let me maintain myself. So love is a set of emotion and behaviors characterized by intimacy, passion, and commitment. It involves care, um, closeness, protectiveness, attraction, affection, and trust. Love can vary in intensity and can change over time. It is associated with a range of positive emotions, including happiness, excitement, life satisfaction, and euphoria. But it can also result in negative emotions such as jealousy and stress. When it comes to love, some people would say it is one of the most important human emotions. Yet, despite being one of the most studied uh, behaviors, it is still the least understood. Nigerians are great and interesting people, and despite the fact that we always criticize the country, we would never trade being Nigerian for any other thing. Now, the real question is, do Nigerians actually love Nigerians and the country, you know, enough to make the right decisions in, um, what's it called, whether be it personal decisions to better themselves, political decisions, environmental choices, do Nigerians love Nigerians enough to make decisions that just would bring, bring about good and love, you know, for the greater good? Now, that's the question for tonight. Now, please, let's hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join the conversation. Send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 3 You can also tweet at us at Wayshow, Africa 1, with the hashtag Wayshow. Of course, you know I can never pass an opportunity to talk about the election season with this love matter. Because, you know... I have studied most of the political candidates, especially the top four political candidates. And in my mind, whenever I see some people campaigning for certain people, I just wonder, do you really, really love your country? Do you care enough that come? We are in a state that really needs some level of transformation, some level of tough love for us to come out of this mess. Because if you listen to certain people, Nigerians are very, very, very self. We've grown to become very self-centered. Like we just think about self. We're not even worried about the next neighbor, right? We're not worried about what happens. Let, just, let my tummy be full, let me be fine. That's all we think about as Nigerians. And it is the majority of us. Very few Nigerians are actually sitting down to say, you know what? I don't mind to go hungry, but if our country, if our nation, if my fellow Nigerian is better, I don't mind that. So when I see some kinds of conversation going around, and that's why, particularly this political season, I don't talk to nobody about anything because it doesn't make sense to me, right? It doesn't make any sense because if you truly love your country, there are certain parameters that you will set and then use those parameters to make decisions for the forthcoming elections and all of that. And that's just one angle. Because we know everything around the country right now is hinged around governance, right? So if you, as a person, you claim to love the country or you love the fellow human being, I mean, there are some decisions that is a no-brainer. You would think is a no-brainer, but it's not. I mean, I've had a neighbor. I've said this story several times, right? When I was nursing my first child, I had a neighbor that... So I got a puppy as a, as a gift... You know, I told them to give us those hairy, small puppies. They went to bring Rottweiler for me. <laughs> but hey, this puppy was so cute. I loved that puppy so much yeah, because it was a gift and all of that. And at night, when the, because it was a puppy, it was also crying and all of that. But my neighbor now calls me up and says, oh, this puppy is always disturbing that her baby is not able to sleep because she also was not seeing a, a baby alongside me. Do you know that? I called my parents because my parents are dog lovers, right? I called them and said, do you guys want... I have this really cute Rottweiler. Do you want this dog? Because I can't keep this dog anymore. And I would have to let it go. And to pain me if I don't know where it's going to. So I had to ship that dog from Lagos to Kaduna. Just because I needed my neighbor's daughter to be, to be okay. Was it convenient for me to do? No. Would she have done the same? I don't think so. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. But what I have learned right now is I do my part at every time. Forget about whether the person replicates the love or not. Mm -hmm. So if, imagine we start to think in that light, don't you think Nigeria will be better? So when we say the topic, do Nigerians have love for themselves? And do they have love for country? It was important that I set that foundation. What do you think about the topic? Do you agree or do you disagree? Or what's, what are your general thoughts on it? 
Let me start with you, Mary. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, now that you put it that way, it's nice to have it reciprocated, but I think what's coming to my head is where do you build, where does empathy come from? Because um, I don't think I have, as a person, I don't think I'm that, like the way you are. I am kind, but still self, you know, kind of. And I'm thinking, where really does empathy come from? Is it a... Um, is it upbringing? Is it from family? I grew up an only child, so will I say I didn't really have to share to anything anybody. or mm. be there for anybody, you know? So I, but I, I was just taught to do good. So in the sense that I would do tiny things for people. Oh, okay, you, um, you need me to drop you. Okay, it's fine. I will drop you you know, some very basic things or even some little random things that my friends would tell me, ah, you're actually a really nice person. But I don't think I'm... That's sacrificial. Yeah, to, to that empathy point. And in general, I think Nigerians have love in their hearts, but there are just so many layers that has blocked it. Mm. So we're not able to express it. Because... I can't say that we don't have love for ourselves in Nigeria because if your car stops, or me, all the times my car has stopped or something, there's always some random stranger or even the touts around that are ready to help me. Ah, madam, what happened? Yes, they might want to cheat you. They might, want you to know. Extort you. Yeah, but there's still that, ah, what happened or what happened, you know, kind of thing. Even if you go to the market, uh, and maybe like you have an issue or something like somehow Charles, somebody is always able to help you might need to bribe the person you know because they would expect something after but there's that communal you know N nature n nature in us but we just have certain it's like certain layers and layers and layers of trauma that we have gone through mm. as a people that is not enabling us to express it Jigget. So we have just shut down that part. Yes, we've shut down that part. Do you agree with that, Jennifer? Because I think what Mary is saying, <laughs> you don't. it makes a lot of sense to me. In as much as I get where Mary is coming from, but is it really love if the person is helping you because they want to extort you mm. or because they want to cheat you? Mm. To me, that's very manipulative. Because when you love a person, you don't manipulate them. When you love a person, you let go of your selfish desire. Yes. To actually help and that person. There. Do you understand? I know that there are, there are times when I'm going through something. There's a time I was going through, hmm, I was going through serious <laughs> heartbreak. Mm. <laughs> oh, and then time. another girl reached out to me and she was going through something similar, but much worse. What the person did to her was worse. But guess what? I had just finished crying an hour ago. Do you know I stayed up with her for two hours? I forgot about your From pain. From 12 a.m. to 2 a.m., I was there consoling her and telling her what to do and encouraging her. It was when the call ended, I was about to sleep. I asked myself, Are you not going to? I said, Ah, who will call me? Mm, <laughs> do you understand? But I'm not saying I'm the greatest person on earth, but I'm just saying that in that moment, I didn't think of myself. I just wanted to help her because I felt like, oh my God, she's in pain. Like nobody should have to go through that because I can relate. Mm. So I don't want to see that happen. If I see someone's car stop on the road and I know that I can help you, why would I be looking for how to collect money from you? Mm. That's not love anymore. Now, empathy plays a very huge role. And every day when I see people, I know it is not just... Um, specific to nigerians it's, it's a human thing and a lot of people have been through it a lot of people are, are, are living or their actions are coming from a place of hurt mm. and that's because of what life has thrown their way their upbringing where um, probably um the kind of family um they came out of that kind of so they are not even capable of, of love a lot of people don't even understand mm. what it means to love a person to love your next neighbor 
sometimes even even in offices you see where people are sabotaging your work mm. do you understand it's like oh we're just thing we're talking we're working together we're working on a project together and we know that okay at the end of the day when this project comes out we'll both get accolades yeah 50 50 but the other person goes behind you and probably sells you short and then when you get to the finish line they're giving the award to that person and mm. not you but then you've done probably the bulk of the work mm. that's not love mm. and some people tell you oh it's business it's again you're selfish mm. you're selfish and people need to accept that and i feel like my relating with people and being a customer success and account manager and working with people and fully understanding people i've just come to realize that people don't actually love other people mm. everyone is looking out for their own pockets everyone mm. is looking out for themselves you were talking about oh um you see you've heard people talk about who they are voting for mm. um in the upcoming election and i won't lie to you Ua. when i listened to some people and i asked them why why are you voting for this person and the reason did not make any sense to me i actually took has, a step he has back. helped me in the past i just told the person <laughs> i told the person see as far as i'm concerned you are looking out for my downfall hmm. it's as simple as that i'm not going to curse you out or abuse you because of your choice but i will choose to stay away because our values do not align and if it's not aligning i don't see any reason why we should be friends because if you can do that, and if you're voting for somebody for selfish reasons, a lot of people are voting for their own pockets, for selfish reasons, then as far as I'm concerned, you don't even care that we've been suffering for the past You don't care about the growth years. of your country. Exactly. You don't care about me. You don't care about yourself. You, you don't even love yourself to even start it. Because if you actually love yourself, you, you will wish yourself yeah, you wish, ah, you wish yourself good. <laughs> Absolutely. Let me come to you, NJ. <laughs> so, I'll pick up from where Jennifer stopped. Um, for me personally, I feel like, um, like you earlier mentioned, we don't, we're not, first of all, we come from, we're very selfish people, unfortunately. And this has been on for a while, and that's the reason why anything we do, there's always, uh, there's always something behind it. There's a reason. A motive. There's a yeah. motive behind it. And so when someone is doing anything, carrying out any activity and you're not carrying it out out of all the care empathy you know you're obviously being at that point in time most people just think about themselves how does this any situation benefit me as mm. an individual whether it's the elections whether it's at work even when you're working together as a team it happens a lot within the office environment you come in and you're working as a team everything we do is together for us to be able to, you know, succeed together as one, since we're one company. Mm. But you realize that even within the workspace, there are a lot of um, groups with different motives at the end of the day. These groups is in charge of tarnishing other people's images so that they don't get very far. This group is in charge of not doing anything but blaming other people for getting, taking all the work. So there are different reasons, and this we, we also portray even our, in our patriotism to Nigeria as a country. And that's the, you know, it's ourselves and our country. Mm. Now, when it comes to our country, where, I don't know, I keep saying, sometimes in my, behind the scenes, I would say, I curse the person who cursed Nigeria. Mm. Because it's almost like there's a veil over our heads. Mm. Like, we've been at this for 60-something years. So at this point, when certain conversations about politics, I do not get involved. For me, politics has become as personal as religion has become. Mm. So it's a run your own race kind I'm of thing. And it's you. not because I am selfish. It's because I do not want to be tampered with in terms of my choice. Mm. I, do, I do not want to be swayed. And I have my reasons for not wanting to be swayed. For the last... 30 something years or 60 something years, we've seen different leaders come in, promise, and just walk away with doles of money and not deliver anything. And we've seen the ones that have been able to deliver some to a, a level, but not been able to complete even after maybe two terms in office or three. But we have to, I feel like we have to get to the point where the moment we start loving ourselves, it has to start with us. 
the reason why Nigeria is the way it is is because we do not have love for self. Mm. <laughs> John F. Kennedy said, do not ask what your country can do for you, but ask for what you can do for your country. So for me, I believe it starts with us. And the moment we start loving ourselves, then we find it in our heart to love others. You, even the Bible says it, that you can't give what you don't have. You can't give what you don't have. So if you do not have love for you mm. as a human being, yourself, yeah. it's hard for you to want to love someone else for who they are. Absolutely. And that's why the Bible says that love your neighbor as, as you, you would yourself. yourself. So the, the reason you see this mm -hmm. drama going on in Nigeria, especially in Africa, is, the, is that lack. And that's why... Why I actually frown at things like Valentine because you water down the, the intensity of, mm. of what the concept of love is. Mm. Do you understand? If you, if you water down love to just material things, pay me this, buy me that, yeah. you have lowered the intensity. Love is so deep that if we understood the language of love and we understood what love meant, right, in its real entirety of love, Love would cure a lot of sickness, naturally, that we thought were cancer that was going to lead to uh, maybe death. Love would have cured a lot of sickness that we have, even as a people, as a country. Because, you see, I was watching a video one day on Dubai, how they pay attention to everything, even down to, even if you know if you marry yourself, they go help you, get you money. You know, like, you know, a country that feels like I take pride to, to see that my fellow, um, what's it called, Arab man, is not mopping the floor, is not, it's like a thing of pride for them. Mm. So where do we get to as Africans, as Nigerians, where I look at you and say, you know what, this job that you're doing is too demeaning, we need to upgrade you. Yeah. Do you understand? But instead, you look at somebody and say, ah, so we are the chop, you said one chop. Because if not, for yeah. the life of me, what, what would explain you know, when we all travel outside of the country, we don't enjoy the creme de la creme. Mm. We only enjoy the crumb. Like, we enjoy what our pocket can, can do. do. Yeah. The kind of luxury that our leaders enjoy when they travel out of this country, we have not even smelt it. Mm -hmm. So I don't understand how you would enjoy that much luxury. And first of all, what wakes you, what, what meets you at your airports? Do you understand? Like, I don't understand. Is, is it that you, it is a curse? that it is a taboo that um, good life, good governance, good uh, well-being, yeah. is it a taboo for us to enjoy it? So let me, let you know me what? Give you a story. I will come to your story. Let's just quickly, because <laughs> the, the blood, you know, so that's why I know they talk in Nigeria, but my blood mm -hmm. goes hot. But I have to take a break so that I'll open our phone lines and I'll come to your story, mm -hmm. Jennifer, when we come back from the break. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Right, so thanks for staying with us. I'm trying to calm down. <laughs> it's our ladies' night. Please, I want to eat this cake in peace. I'm not the show. It's our ladies' night out, and uh, we're discussing the topic: Do Nigerians? I mean, in the season spirit of Valentine, do Nigerians have love for ourselves and our country? That's a question. Now, please let's hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join the conversation. Send us an SMS or WhatsApp to zero eight one eight zero three four six six three. You can also tweet at us at Wayshow Africa One with the hashtag Wayshow. Now, our phone line is now open. Please. Um, keep your conversation short. Then also turn off all the device, whatever it is that you're watching, so, so we can hear ourselves. Now, the number to call is 0702500749. Again, 0702500749. Jennifer, you're going to tell us a story. Okay. So when we moved, my, my parents moved into where they are currently staying. There's this street before our own street. When we first moved there, the street was, it was bad. Then um, a year later, they got a new local government chairman. Now, at the beginning of the streets, that's where the local government chairman's house is. Very massive building. But you see that street mm. from his gate. Now, on his gate, he has his own streets that he can always take. But the one facing his streets, Uwa, till today, mm -hmm. we've been there for more than 11 years. Mm -hmm. No car can pass. Even you as a woman being... When you're passing there, you have to pass there with caution. If you make a mistake, mm. see, you get injured. So let me add to the story in the spirit of road. Where we grew up in Kaduna, in Tudungwada area, right? 
it was a close, just three houses. Ours, once you come from the express, ours was facing you. A le the right-hand side where the, the uh, compound, the way the northerners live, the right-hand side was another man, in, a Kaduna State man. There was a small bridge because it had a gully. That place had its gully. That is how every day, whenever we are passing that road, our heart will be in our mouth. Because literally, you see the road has eroded. Mm. So what my dad did on that road, because my dad is a builder, he's a contractor. There was a particular contract I can never remember. I can't forget that contract. He made it. So he, he, he did the project and he made money and he now had excess material from the site. That was how my daddy brought all the materials and everything. And he came to the, the what's it called, that bridge and constructed a bridge till today. I was born in that house. So. Till today, if you go there, it is how we left it mm. many years ago. That is how that road is. And at some point again, my father was opportune to like, you know, they wanted to give him a contract. And they say, oh, that uh, he was supposed to build a road. So by the time he said, no problem, he was excited about the road, no problem, we'll build the road and all of that. But they now did all these kickbacks, where maybe, for instance, the contract is worth X, Y amount of money. And you then say, oh, that um, this person has to take this percentage, that mm. person has to. Mm. So my father now looked at the money that was remaining and I said, so... What will I use to build the road? Build road? And I said, eh, just... So the guy now spoke in house. I said, that's just pour sand on the road. So my father made a statement, you know, because he told us this story. He said, he just asked the man one thing. So I would pour the sand. Somebody will now drive on that road. They will have an accident. They will die. So that, their blood will be on my head. He said, see, Oga, plus you, plus your contract. Hold it. After that time, my father never went for any government contract. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. What are we saying today? A kilometer of road that you're supposed to be able to build maybe for 10,000 Naira, you will quote 1 billion Naira on it. And you will still not even finish the road. You will not even construct the road properly. The road will not even last. So that's what I'm saying, that the kind of evil we have in our hearts, I don't understand where we got to this point. Where we, don't, we don't even care that these are human beings. You know, that is what evil, I mean, that's what is eating me up. That if we even said, okay, we're not even doing anything. Let us even just love this person for loving sake. Things will just take a natural, as in cure. All the problem of corruption and everything that we have in this country, it will be a natural cure for it. But because we do not have that love, we can't even, we can't even, we can't boast of anything, good government, nothing. We can't boast of anything. So it's really, really painful. But Angie, you were going to say something, sorry. No, I just, uh wanted to add that it's just we forget that it's our duty patriotism we're supposed to be patriotic nigerians and that is showing love for country you know be um loving our country respecting our country and also defending our country goes to even up all the way to when we're posting on social media mm. we it shows that it, it tells you how people feel about nigeria or about their country you see, in the U.S., when a lot of things happen, it takes a long while before you see it posted by a U.S. citizen on their social media. But anything happens in Nigeria. In short, most of the time, on my family group, is my mom, who is in the U.S., that sends it to the family group that this is what is happening. Are you feel sure you're safe? And I'm like, but nothing is happening here. So it tells you that bad news travels very fast. Mm -hmm. And we have, it has become a custom for us in Nigeria to spread bad news about ourselves. Mm -hmm. But we're always on the defensive when a CNN is ready to post what is happening in Africa mm -hmm. very quickly and as it's happening. You know, we, we criticize other countries for wanting to showcase our nakedness when mm -hmm. on a daily basis we are on social media showcasing it ourselves. by ourselves. So... It goes to tell you that even, you know, when I keep saying I caused the person who cost us because I, I have sat down to reason it out. I've been in a com several conversations trying to reason out why are we as Nigerians the way we are? Why are most of us the way we are? Why do we care so less about other people and so much? Because we, we are driven, we're driven by hunger. Is this? We're no, driven yeah. by, there do you understand? No, no, I'm saying. I beg to differ. No, I'm not, I'm not saying that. No, 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 I'm not. I'm not disputing the fact that there is hunger, but I have. There are other countries. Sorry, sorry. Let me let me rephrase. We are driven by survival. Thank A majority you. of us I are driven by survival. That. 
Because it's not by poverty. There are certain areas where a poor man would break his bread and give you. And you are when you are looking the way you are looking. But because it is in his nature, or he has been trained, or he has learned to behave that way. He has learned, he grew up learning, being taught how to share. Hmm. We have been fighting, and that's why I love the word that we are using, survival. We have been at this survival game for way too long that it has corrupted every good thing every about... Fiber. Every fiber. <laughs> every... Someone says, please oh, send wow. me your call-in number first. The number is on display, please. <laughs> it, it, has dis it has corrupted Very everything awful. that we don't even see it as... We see it as a norm hmm. when people are fighting for themselves. We, when people are being selfish, you just see, we see it as a normal thing. It's almost like, uh, what were you expecting? And I'm like, I was expecting that people would behave how I would behave. Mm. Yeah. We would, uh, as much as it would benefit me, I'm thinking you know, uh, it would be nice for it not to benefit someone else. It took a long time for me to start to treat people the way they are. You, know, you see, there's, there's, a, there's a principle that says treat people the way they are, not the way you mm -hmm. are. Yeah. I didn't understand that thing. For the life of me, I kept on, every time I would be crying, oh, <laughs> no, my eye has borrowed. <laughs> because I didn't understand it, but it is actually a principle. Because naturally, you're inclined to treat people the, so you, you address people the way you think. Mm -hmm. You address people the way your mind, mm -hmm. your state of mind mm -hmm. is. Not knowing that everyone has, in, even as we sit down here, so all of us get different intentions. Yeah. But you see, the prayer is that, oh, I pray that the intentions are of good oh, and not good. of evil. Yeah. Mm. But the truth is, I had to learn that the hard way. That you must never ever judge people by your own thought process or by how you view them. Because people are different. So you must learn from Bala Blue. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my God! <laughs> you know? So you must learn to you must learn to treat people the way they are. You see, all of these things that we're talking about, even the case of um, what's it called, love, yeah. on the road, do you understand? On the road, ah, we can't even talk about the road rage. When you're driving, Austin from Benin, you are alive. <laughs> Hi, good evening. Hi, good evening. Hi, good evening. What you are discussing very good topic. Actually, all of traveling in Nigeria too long is fast appearing because of uh, money. But um, I think um, to be honest, people uh, will appreciate you for being honest. Uh, and it works you know, when you are honest. So I want your dad. Oh, Austin. Is, uh, it's difficult people. to hear you. Sorry, Austin. The line is breaking. I don't know. I couldn't okay. make a... Go ahead. Take your comments. Please. Greetings, ladies. Our traditional or cultural lifestyle in most communities is used to being communal. This is a strong expression of love to ourselves, our communities, and eventually our country. Once upon a time, the love and hospitality shown to a visitor is awesome. The damage caused by corruption and our fragmented moral values has affected us so much that what is left is selfish disposition and almost non-existent love to country. Happy Valentine's, Benson. Hmm. So what's the so way forward? I don't do? want us yeah, to yeah, yes, yeah, I, was, I, was, I was just going I was, to say that. I was really going <laughs> to ahead. say that because like how, how can we move forward you know, from this? Because I, I don't want us to dwell on... We don't have love. We don't have love. I think we should encourage and teach. Self-love. I think we should encourage and teach. Well, know, if you say self-love now, they begin to say Gen Z. You are being lazy. You are being... I mean, because that's where... That's what drives the whole mental health awareness thing. Do you understand? You have toxic workplaces and people are now standing up to say... Look, I think this is totally absurd. I think my parents' generation has sucked in a lot of these things that you people think is normal. And, and so, you know, they're standing up and saying, oh, mental awareness, technology is helping us to, you know, also diversify and do other things. You have more online books, you know, that you can read, you know, 
I know as, as cliche as it sounds, but it feels like everybody's a motivational speaker or so, but you, you can't, uh, on my feed, on Instagram, you can't go to more than two scrolls and not see something inspiring. So I, I, so I get you, right? And for me, I think this change that we seek truly starts from us. Mm. Um, until you get to that point where you die to self, mm. you know? You must die to self, you must die to your needs, you must die to anything self-centered and start to think the good of everybody. And that's why when people ask me, where are you from? I say I'm Nigerian. Because even for the love of country, I say I am Nigerian first, yeah. right? So when I start to think, when we start to think Nigeria first, you know, and Nigeria, so it, things will change. So I think it starts from us just being, you know, conscious of the fact that this decision I'm about to take, who would it benefit? Mm. You know, who would it benefit? Who would, who would gain from it? Who would suffer if this decision that I'm about to take happens or if I take this decision? So when we start to take those decisions and we're now thinking, putting ourselves in the shoes of other people, mm. do you understand? And it goes beyond giving beggars money on the streets. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. If you catch me, you can't catch me giving anybody money on the streets. Do you understand? What I think we can do, because again, we are so used to this whitewashed, for, so, uh, whitewashed form of form empowerment of love. Mm. And, and love and all of that. We think, so now people are so used to it. And that's why somebody would gladly accept a bribe to go and vote. Do you understand? Because they are used to it. They don't understand genuine love. So I used to do, um, what's it called, a board game tournament where I bring in a lot of children. The first edition, the children were in shock. Because they did not believe that there was an, a tournament like that that could cater to the children, cater to their needs, and still give them gifts. They, they, they were like literally in shock. Because usually when people do things like that, you just go do it for the photo ops and the yeah. pictures and all of that. But it was genuine. It was from a place of love. And the children felt it. So let us start to think beyond ourselves. Let's start to think that whatever decision I'm taking, whatever, um, whatever it is that I'm doing, how would it benefit the greater good? Then that change will, will begin to see it. But we have Joseph from Anambra. Joseph, you're live. All right, good evening. Hi, good evening, good evening Claire. Hi, Dave. Thank you. Yes, I think your program is a wonderful one. Thank you. Uh, just uh, so captivating uh, the program. But the truth about it is that I think the spirit of patriotism is not in our country, Nigeria. Mm. And uh, that is supposed to be taught in school. Children from, from nursery, primary, I think they should need a training on patriotism for the country. Mm. If I get to realize that even history itself has been removed from school curriculum, I don't know if it's true or not, mm. but the truth is that we must be patriotic. For you to love your country, there must be a spirit of patriotism. Mm. And that spirit is eroding every blessed day. Mm. But some of us that grow in the north, northern Nigeria was the best place to live in those days. Stay in Sabongeri Kano, in Kakuri Kaduna, in Bukuru in Jos. You will understand that these are people that are so receptive. But today the case is different. The case is different. And why is the case different? No, patriotism. Mm. No, the, 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 the generation now don't even, they don't know history. Thank you so much. I mean, thank you. I mean, when he was just calling, it was nostalgic for me. Yeah. And because, you see, this love we were preaching, because our neighbors knew that we had genuine love for them. When they were busy burning people's houses in the north, our neighbors were the ones that stood in front of our house and told their fellow um, um, no. um, northerners and the, the guys that were going around with machete and attacking people that if you burn these people's house, be ready to burn our own house. Because these people have been nothing but great neighbors, kind people to us. They love us genuinely, and we love them right back. Because, you know, it was not a love that we had anything to gain from them. Mm -hmm. We just genuinely loved them, you know. So when we were even moving out of that, because it was a core northern area, when we had to move, you know, from that day, now with tears and cry, they didn't want us to move. But again, how many people knew us well enough? 
Do you get my point? See, love will make a way. Yeah. Love will make a way. And if our leaders can just set aside selfish ambition just for one second and think, really, what do we need as a country now? Nigeria will be a much better place once you are able to set aside your selfish ambition because go and check all the people that want to be president, people that want to be governors, people that want to be re go to go into the Senate and all of those places, positions of leadership. Most of them, they are coming at it from a place of selfishness, from a place of hunger or poverty of the mind or whatever. They want to just embezzle things for themselves and keep it to themselves and their families. Until we move past that, we can't go, go far. I have, comments. More comments. Yeah, I have a comment here from Santos. Do Nigerians have love for themselves and country? We need to understand what you mean by love here. Before we can answer this question, we need to understand what love is. But if I take love as respect, I will say that Nigerians do not have love for themselves and the country. Because as a country, we are not naturally formed as a country to love, but to exhibit selfishness. That is why we all always think within our tribal enclaves and not as Nigerians in patriotic way. Love goes beyond boundaries. In Nigeria, we live within our boundaries of ethnicity. From Santos. Thank you. Thank you, Santos. Um, so Santos has said that if he takes um, love as respect, I don't think love equals respect because I can respect a person and but not love, love the them. person. Yeah. Love goes beyond. Love is deeper. It's, it's deep. It goes beyond <laughs> respect. It, it, love it, is it, genuinely it's a wanting to see things. someone grow. Yeah. yeah. Love is seeing that, oh, if, 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 if I get this thing, it will only serve me for a short period of time. But if I let it go and give it to somebody else, it will go a long way to serve a lot more people. Mm. That is love. Absolutely. But how many people can do that? Letting go of selfish ambition. Let's take more comments quickly. Okay, okay. good evening, my um, dear beautiful sisters of what are you saying? Hashtag ways. Do Nigerians have love for themselves and country? According to Sister Owa and Jennifer, they hit the nail on the head. Nigerians only love their stomachs and <laughs> themselves alone and hate their country. There is so much hunger in the land and people are not bothered if they are voting for the wrong people. They are the ones that would vote for the same set and group of people that put us in this predicament and expect their country to move forward. They should stop deceiving themselves and, facing, and face the truth. When things are going wrong, they will be the first person to complain. Happy Valentine's Day to you, my dear sisters. My name is David Ilo, Ways Daniel regular Ilo. fan. Daniel Ilo, <laughs> Ways regular fan. And I have another comment here. It says, greetings, my dazzling ladies. I agree with what you have all said. Empathy is the key to moving forward, and the truth is that you cannot give what you do not have. I wish that we can be more conscious of love, of loving one another, and it starts with loving yourself and expecting less. Happy Valentine's Day to you all, gift of four. Thank you, gift. Thank you, Just take one last uh, One more, yeah. Good evening, ladies. There are some Nigerians that truly love others and are ready to help but most times are being made to regret their good deeds later. Mm. This makes me remember the saying of my mom, there are people who are ready to do good things for others, but they don't see who to do it for. Another thing is we don't cherish what we grow in Nigeria. Look at the case of rice. Some people used to say they can never eat the locally produced, but the imported ones, no matter the price, and you expect the country to grow and improve. May God save us all, Mrs. Oh. Adenji. Mrs. Adenji, just go touch another one. <laughs> <laughs> but we have to leave it there. But That's thank right. you so much, ladies. This show was meant to just provoke something in us. Because I can't emphasize this thing more than I have said. The elections are coming. If you truly love your country, look deeply beyond your personal gains. Because some people have already said that one certain candidate enter. Me said, I, I go, don't get office for Asso Rock and mm. all of that. People are taking decisions or influencing decisions based on their personal gains. Let's move past all of those things and find the candidates that will truly take Nigeria out of this quagmire or whatever it is that we are. Nigeria is actually a potentially wealthy nation. Like, if Nigeria does well, every one of us will benefit from it. So I'm just 
nudging everyone or, or giving a charge. Please, the elections are coming in the spirit of Valentine. Let's love Nigeria enough to do what is right for her. All right, thank you so much, ladies. Ah, was a good show. <laughs> <laughs> Even I can feel it. Yes. Thank you, Mary. Thank you, Jennifer. Thank you, NJ. Now, before we go, do ensure you follow us on Instagram at Wayshow Africa, across all our social media handles at Wayshow Africa. You can engage and follow all our conversations. Remember to like, share, and invite your families and friends to watch and follow the conversation. Now, if you missed our quote for today, here it is again. Love is that condition in which the happiness of another person is essentially, or is essential rather to your own. Um, we'll see you guys tomorrow at 8 p.m. as we bring another great conversation to your screen. Enjoy. Bye.